So to get us started on this episode of questions from y'all, we got to give a huge shout out to the two newest Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, one is Milton W. And the next one is Izana. Appreciate y'all. Much love to Team Keep It Clean. Thank you to all of y'all. And, and, and to show appreciation, let's start off with the very first question from the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, uh, Izan. He said, good morning, Engraven. Hey, good morning. And when I'm recording this, it actually is the morning time. Um, but he said, good morning. I hope you're having a good day. Been watching your content ever since the Titans lost in the playoffs. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, I also wanted to say thanks for all the work you put in. Your content has become a part of my daily routine, and I appreciate the community uh, you and Team Keep It Clean have created. Hey, and that's, that's important as far as um the, the 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 community the family really not even community the family um and it's important to just for everybody to know that they're welcome for everybody to know that they can come through uh and for everybody to just have fun just have a good time because that's all it's about the, again the, with this channel one of my uh first and biggest goals um that i wanted for the channel was for it to be uh, a safe space and a place where everybody, because we know that the world, it comes with enough struggles and stresses and all that. But I wanted this to be an opportunity to people, for people to sort of get away from all that for a little bit. Talk about some football, have some fun in the process. So I, I appreciate it. Uh, he said, now to my question. Having looked at the roster as of August 30th, um, and I'm recording this on August 31st, uh, so a couple of things could change. Um, but he said, I believe the Ravens should incorporate a lot more for three fronts rather than three four. And I also believe that they will. Uh, now, with, um, with Mike McDonald, um, I believe that he ran uh, multiple types of defense uh, over at uh, Michigan. So that could end up happening. So you could be spot on. Uh, he said, um, I think this is because in a base 3-4 front, you need two outside linebackers and two middle linebackers. We currently only have two guys that can play outside linebackers, while five that can play middle linebacker. And that, that is definitely subject to change. By the time you see this video, it probably will have already changed because there is absolutely no way that they are going into the season with just Adafi away, Justin Houston, that's it. I mean, uh, my, like my guy Cam, he had reminded me of in a previous video, they could also put Malik Harrison, the outside linebacker, but there's no way that they're just going with the guys that they got on the team right now. Uh, they're going to make a move there. For who? We'll see. Um, he said, but if we switch to a base 4-3, Mike McDonald ran that at Michigan. See, I should have kept reading. Um, we can better the rotation at middle linebacker and let our pass rushers run forward to the quarterback instead of backwards like there's some DBs. <laughs> Um, this will also allow Calais Campbell to kick back out to the edge where he was very productive back with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Lastly, uh, I have barely heard any news from the Ravens' first team D-line since camp started, and this has me thinking they could possibly switch it up and pull a surprise. But I don't know. I, really, I don't really know what uh, is going on right now, and those are my thoughts on what front would best fit the roster. Have a good day and thanks for taking my question. No, you ain't got to thank me. I, I thank you for supporting. Now, um, with uh, what you mentioned as far as uh, them doing a lot more 4 3 and 3 4, um, for me, and it's something that you brought out too, you said you talked about how Calais Campbell had a lot of success uh, with that with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I, I think that's what it's about. To me, that's what it's about with offense, with defense, with everything. Uh, just putting guys in the best position to where they can have success. Now, you can't always cater to every single player's individual need at the same time. Um, but collectively, just coming to a, a, an agreement on, all right, this is where all these guys, they can be the most useful. That's where they can have the most production. That's where they can do what they specialize in. The most. So hopefully Ravens do that. Hopefully uh, in your case, which you're speaking specifically about the defense, hopefully they do do that. I think we all need to stop. Next question came from my guy Outlaw and appreciate you for being a patron. He said, uh, we can't really say what Lamar contract will look like. It starts with him. We don't know if he started at a short contract to match up with the new TV deal or if he started with the 10 year deal to the Ravens. If it comes to the franchise tag, so be it. With the tag, he will be paid like his peers and not underpaid. If he wins the Super Bowl on the tag, he will get paid like Joe did, I hope. When he signed his rookie deal, he basically signed up for 
for seven years, including the franchise tag. It's been five years. No, it's only been four years. Um, and we need to, him to finish seasons or win the bowl. Uh, who cares how much he makes if he wins it? As long as the Ravens don't screw up the cap behind his deal. Love Lamar, but ah, there it goes. Hey, I told y'all what. Whenever you hear that, you know what's coming next. He says, uh, "Love Lamar, but I have loved the Ravens longer. If he don't want to be here, peace." I'm pretty sure the Ravens are not offering him something disrespectful, knowing everyone is waiting to say Lamar made a bad deal without an agent. Hashtag keep it clean. Uh, your thoughts and thanks. Love the content. Appreciate it, Outlaw. Um, when, when you first sign your rookie contract, especially your first round pick, uh, it's a four-year contract. Um, and then it has the fifth year option. So you're right about that. And then it, it has, depending on how things go, it has the possibility of reaching the franchise tag. But again, with the, the fifth year option, that is, it's like with the fifth year option and with the franchise tag, and even if it gets to the second franchise tag, what are those fifth year options? Well, and what is the franchise tag? All of them are essentially prove it deals. And I'm, I'm glad you brought this to my attention because I didn't even think of the fifth year option as one. But the, the, the fifth year option sort of serves as a, all right, we like you um, and we want to keep you around another year uh, so we can hopefully get the most out of you. OK, cool. No problem. Um, and then maybe we'll, we'll even come to a contract extension with you. So, OK, I get that. And, and it allows teams to, to just have more flexibility, it allows them to have buy some more time uh, until they sign whatever that player is, whoever that player is. So what's the franchise take? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Just a higher amount because it gives you that player for another year. And it, you obviously haven't signed that player to a long term deal yet. Uh, and it allows the team to buy some time until they can come up with a contract agreement or they'd be like, you know what? No, uh, we're straight. Kyler Murray, fifth year option. No, didn't happen. Josh Allen. Fifth year option, no, didn't happen. Now, let me know, and, and there's plenty of other quarterbacks. They're, they're, we can go through all the quarterbacks. We don't have to. But the fifth year option with Lamar Jackson, I know it, it takes two. So you spot on about that. Ravens, they got to come up with a deal. Lamar Jackson, he got to come up with a deal. They both got to agree to it. So right about that. But from your wording, it makes it sound like Lamar Jackson hasn't earned his contract and of course you could let me know if i'm wrong but from from your wording it makes it sound like lamar jackson still needs to earn this contract like he's not deserving of a contract and, and with that i would disagree next question and i'm gonna let y'all guess what day this question came on uh but it came from hottie and appreciate you being a patron and said my man engraving what's going on lamar has been going off on his twitter this past hour first responding to a fan's comment saying that the ravens did not offer him a 250 million dollar guaranteed contract then he likes a photo of himself in a dolphins jersey i have a feeling his patience is running thin and a deal is not likely to happen before his deadline what do you think the organization is playing at here much love to you big bro <laughs> Lamar Jackson patience running thin huh I mean at this point it, it could be I mean they, they ain't come up with a deal yet and now as of today as of this morning of this recording uh just about a couple hours ago they restructured Ronnie Stanley's deal so with them restructuring Ronnie Stanley's deal um that could make it look like they already went to their last resort as far as getting some money for this season uh, and one of the first resorts would obviously be for uh, Lamar Jackson to open up a lot of cap space because if he signed an extension, that could open up a lot of cap space. Um, but he ain't signed no extension. So they went to Ronnie Stanley um, and, and Brian McFarlane, Raven salary cap. He reported that um, that he, he would think that that would be an indication uh, that the Ravens have given up on striking a deal with Lamar this year. I mean, we'll see. So we just <laughs> we just got to hold out hope. Um, but I'm, I'm sure for Lamar. Um, it would be frustrating uh, because, again, I, I try to put myself in his shoes like, man, you've been working at a job. Uh, you see a lot of peers that, you know, uh, in the same position that either started around the same time as you or even some after you. Uh, and they got paid. You've accomplished a lot. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, you accomplished some more than some other uh, your peers who got paid. Um, but you still haven't gotten paid yet. Next question came from one of the newer patrons, uh, MRAP. Appreciate you. So, Dan Graven just wanted to stop in and say thanks for being consistent. Uh, that is so important in entrepreneurship. Hey, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, he said, now, <coughs> excuse me, for Josh Ross, 
I liked him so much that I had to become a Patreon, <laughs> finally. I've been watching you for at least uh, a year now. Uh, the last time I spoke up like this, Lamar Jackson was entering the draft, and I tweeted the Jets to draft him. The draft is when I became a Ravens fan. Oh, okay, so you came in with Lamar, so since 2018. Cool, cool, cool. Now, nonetheless, this Ross kid looks so instinctive and calculated. Uh, it reminds me of Luke Keekley, a tackle machine, maybe even a Ray someday. Oh, that's, that's some high praise right there. Luke Keekley and Ray Lewis, oof. Uh, he said, this is what we wanted Patrick Queen to be, but he seems more like the second man in charge. Ah, uh, Now, if we could take a machine and combine Josh Ross, his tackling, and Patrick Queen, his speed, his athleticism, uh, just his burst, put them together. He had a perfect linebacker. But anyway, um, he said, Ross is sort of, uh, Ross is soda, Queen is Mentos. I think they will complement each other very well. <laughs> I, now, it all depends on um, how much, uh, if any, playing time that he gets. Because he made the roster. All right, that's the first step. Cool. That's great. Uh, will he be active? I know special teams is a big thing, so it's likely that he'll be active because Welch was active for a lot of games. Um, Welch also made the roster. So we'll see what happens there Because I, I don't think they'll both be active on game day I think it's going to either be one or the other But we'll see, we won't know till we know um, But as far as him complimenting Queen That could end up happening Slowly, but surely Because Josh Bynes is not the Ravens' long-term answer I mean, he's been their, their answer for the past couple of years But he's not the long-term answer um, And the Ravens, they, they, they clearly need to, to find out What's going to happen at inside linebacker Over, these next, over this next season um, this next season is huge for inside linebacker since Patrick Queen, uh, he is in his third year. Um, so it's, it's time to decide whether they're going to pick up the fifth year option or not. So we'll see. He said he looked like the best linebacker we have had in years. Oh, wow. Oh, that, ooh, that's high praise. You really, really like Josh Ross. He said um, his consistency and instincts are what sold me. Yeah, the, the instincts you for sure. And, and yeah, the consistency, too, because he kept doing it like every game. Uh, he said along with his short tackling ability. Uh, what do you think about the potential of him starting midseason on defense? Yeah, it, it could happen. It could happen. It obviously starts with special teams. Uh, but if you get opportunities on defense, he, he would just have to make the most of it. Next question came from another patron. Shout out to my guy, Raymond. He said, hey, Raven, I got a question for you. Uh, do you think we are going to go far uh, in the playoffs if we make it there? I do. Uh, I think we will make it there. But how far can we go? Hey, as, as, as far as... The Ravens take them, and it's, it's on everybody. Um, it, it takes a lot. Uh, it takes a lot of stuff just going right for you. Health, uh, play calling, uh, execution, just everybody doing their job, and then some. So if they can get that done, they can go as far as they want to. Next question came from DeAndre, uh, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, hey, Graven, how are you and the family doing? Hope all is well. Oh, yeah, everything is really good. Uh, he said, should we go after Darius Slayton? He will be a huge addition for us and gives us another big body possession wide receiver. See, with Darius Slayton, I, I was watching some stuff on him a few days ago, and I see that he, he ain't afraid to go up and get it. Uh, he, got some, he got some good speed, um, but he, uh, he's a smooth route runner, not a crisp route runner. Not like a cut, cut on a dime type of route runner, but he's smooth with it. Um, so, I mean, I, I wouldn't be mad at that. And, and then it, it, somebody else to, to, for, for the yak. The yak. The yak has been something Ravens have been missing. So if they were to add him to, I, I ain't going to complain. I ain't going to complain at all. If they, they want to add another quality wide receiver, okay, cool. But then I think, hmm, I wonder who the odd man out would be. Next question came from my guy, Phil. Um, and he said, as, and again, this is, I'm recording this on August 31st. At 10.13 a.m. So practice hasn't happened yet, but for the past two days. Anyway, he said, as we already know, Ronnie Stanley passed his physical and got taken off the pup list. But on August 29th, they reported on Ravens.com that Stanley still has not stepped on the field yet and hasn't practiced once yet. Um, Harbaugh had no answer for this and only wanted to talk about the rest of the team. So if you ask me, I don't see Stanley starting week one. Probably comes off the sideline as a substitute to work his way back. If he doesn't start uh, one game this season, I think EDC should try to trade him or do a buyout for the remainder of his contract. He couldn't trade. He couldn't trade. If, I mean, he could trade him, but the dead money, especially with the restructure that, that happened early this morning, it would just be a crazy amount of dead money. Like, I think before the restructure, his dead money in 2023 would be like 29 mil. And that was before the restructure. So I think with the restructure, it would be like 35 mil. 
because restructure was for a little over six point three mil. So they they wouldn't they just wouldn't be able to do it. He also said with the Ravens interest uh, the Ravens uh, interest in signing Kenyon Drake. Uh, does this mean they will release Mike Davis or trade Justice here? I think it would mean that J.K. Dobbins would end up going on IR because um, I think it would mean that he might just not be all the way ready yet. Uh, but that by the time you see this video, we will have the answer to that. Uh, he said this past Tuesday on the Pat McAfee show, they showed the new NFL football's Amazon Prime created. The ball is thinner and longer than the Duke football and travels through the air like rockets. Saying there are rumors in a video from Amazon Prime on YouTube saying these balls will be used for Thursday night football come September 16th. Which Amazon Prime Network took over. They show YouTube videos of Russell Wilson and Herbert throwing him like darts. Then a video of Matt Stafford throwing him from one end zone to the other end zone. You need to go take a look at these things. I'm telling you, there'll be a lot more throwing on Thursday Night Football this season. Can they do that? Can they, like, use different footballs for Thursday Night Football? Like, that that would be so weird, man. And I have seen the ball. It's like, yeah, it's like long as it's, it's yeah, it's, it's weird. That would, that would be crazy. Cause I mean, uh, that would be that'd be crazy if that happened. Um, but I guess we we just gotta wait and see. And the last patron that sent in the question for this episode came from my guy Martin. And shout out to Martin. He said, "I don't understand why this front office hasn't already paid Lamar the moment he walked through those doors." You should have given him whatever he was asking for. So what if he wants a fully guaranteed contract? My thing is, you're going to pay Lamar 100% on that contract either way because if it's a five to six year contract, you already know you're going to keep him all six of those years. Uh, anyway, why not just go ahead and give him the fully guaranteed deal? Also, I don't think this team is very good without Lamar Jackson. Uh, there is, in my opinion, no other quarterback in this league that can carry this roster week in and week out like Lamar. Ravens better pay Lamar soon because as we saw with the Browns, desperate teams will give Lamar whatever he wants. Whew. And, and what a way to go out because they sure will. You, you already know that they will. Um, so, yeah, Ravens just hopefully they get on it sooner rather than later. Ooh, right now it's looking like, uh, I don't know what it's looking like right now. Um, they got some time. That clock is ticking, though. Uh, September 11th is uh, right around the corner. And Lamar said once week one rolls around, then all them talks, talks are going to get cut off. So Ravens just, hey, it, I mean, obviously, the, the, the whatever deals they offered him wasn't, weren't good enough. Because if it was good enough, then we would hear, hey, Lamar Jackson has signed a contract extension with the Baltimore Ravens. But since we haven't heard that yet, well. Yeah, this feels like a dream.